Hey everybody, welcome back inside the stash. Today we're going to take a uh, look at a little mini HLJ crate, as it were, uh, without this turning into a big to-do about my personal finances. This is effectively everything that I had sitting over uh, in Japan that uh, represents basically the last what I purchased when I was last employed. Uh, being the mature adult that I am with a family and children, I sort of went, nah, all right, pause on the stuff <laughs> on the acquisition side of things. Been working more on building things for a change, which has actually been uh, somewhat enjoyable for a change. Uh, but this is basically everything was sitting over there that needed to come over and cleans out my uh, personal warehouse over there. And as of right now, that's it. There is no more. So uh, people who watched the staff report know that I'm going back to work next week. Uh, on, well, actually, on Monday, got orientation, Tuesday, start working again, so I will catch back up, really, there hasn't uh, been a terrible uh, amount of things I was ordering right now anyway, uh, just really, there hasn't been uh, a great deal of, of things that not so much interest me, but that I don't already have, uh, you find, you find that once your, your stash reaches a certain level, uh, when things are reissued, you're sort of like, yeah, good for the general population. I already have one, but, you know, rah, rah for everybody else. Uh, a great example of that, of course, is all these, uh, you know, Enthusiast Series kits that Fujimi is reissuing and things like that. I, I've, I've got I went back years ago and bought those uh, before the prices really went through the roof. And so the reissues are like, you know, cool for everybody else, but I, I don't need one. I already have one. So I really haven't been ordering that much in the first place. I think I've... I've canceled off uh, five or six items uh, over the last couple of months that I just, you know, I, I I could afford them, but, you know, fiscally speaking, the wise and mature thing to do uh, is to obviously not purchase them, so I didn't, and uh, uh, a few of them I probably actually probably won't even go back and get. I've had a chance to look at what they were uh, once the kits were released in terms of the kit contents and things like that, and it was just like, meh, I, I really don't need that after all, so... Uh, Really, mainly decals. <laughs> what I'm going after, I I have to go back and get uh, some of those BMW M6 GT3 carbon fiber sets from Studio 27 for the kits that I have to do. Uh, <clears throat> and then, uh, really, that's pretty much it. I, I do want to get the one set of uh, of Jaguar XJ9 Le Mans uh, carbon fiber decals, which are actually out now. If you're watching this, it's towards the end of February when I'm making this. Uh, so those kids, those decals actually came out uh, a couple days ago, and while I don't have one of the kits, I know where I can get one relatively uh, inexpensively uh, once I am in a position to start acquiring things again. But I want to grab those decals and the photo etch for it because they're you know those will be the things. Ironically, those will be the things that will be harder to find than the actual model kit that's been out of uh, production for twelve years. Uh, and you know, I think. The main things I've canceled off have been some of the modelers resin kits. Uh, I actually have one in those box that uh, just came in today, and then I've had two that I've had to. Well, actually, one that I canceled, one that I never pre-ordered, and now there's two more that have come up for pre-order that I haven't pre-ordered yet either. Uh, mainly due to the fact that modelers release dates are kind of sketch. Uh, they'll say it's going to come out in this month, and then it doesn't, or they'll say it's going to come out in this month, and it comes out like right at the very beginning of the month. So. Uh, I'm very interested to see if they're going to have a large display again at the uh, Shizuka Hobby Show because they had a very large one at the Tokyo uh, Model and Hobby Show, and that's where a lot of the things that the modelers have been doing the last uh, quarter and a half have been coming out of, have been the, the kits they promised from them. And they have been cranking them out, and they have all, as I've gotten, well, I've gotten two of the five that they presented in Tokyo, and I want to get uh, two of the other, the one that doesn't ask me at all, but uh, that not being the Mazda uh, MX-5, what we would call a Miata, but it's not anymore. They did the uh, the actual race spec version of that Miata, and I don't really need one of those. I like the uh, sort of quasi-club sport one that I have through Playmos. It'll be my take on that race car without actually being a race car race car. I know, I just said I don't need a race car, but it's just a, you know, my, even my race car interests are, you know, limited into certain series and things like that. It may, may span a broad sense of time as far as the series or like, you know, I have like 80s cars, 90s cars, 2000s cars, new cars, but you know, it's, if, if you understood the madness, you'd get it. Uh, but beyond that, like, I, you know, I've been interested to see what else they've got planned. Like, 
these kits seem to have sold really, really well for them, and, and so I, I hope that they're making money on them, as it were, so they can do more stuff, because it's, right now, I think there's one, two, maybe three more that haven't been announced as far as a release date goes, and everything else is either out or is on its way out in the next uh, 60 days or so. And, uh, yeah, so let's, I suppose we'll just hop into what we got here. I'm going to need to adjust the camera so that I can, uh, you know, show you the kits without holding them in front of my face because, uh, you know, watching those videos back, I realize that it kind of muffles the mic since the mic is on the camera and not, you know, I don't have a lapel mic or something like that. Um, but yeah, no, no, don't, don't worry about me. My finances are fine, but this, this just sort of, to just sort of set the scene. This represents the last of the big purchases from the last job. So, uh, before I spin the camera, I'll show you this one set of decals since this camera will work this way better. Uh, it's this, which, you know, it's through the wax paper, so it's kind of hard to see. But what this, what this is, is a, uh, Shunko Denso Supra a reprint. They, they've done these decals in the past, and they have not been available for a little while. Um, I'm not so exactly sure when the last time these were run off. It might have been around 2011, 2012, and uh, they were out of production, and they're they were next to impossible to find. What they do is they make either the uh, 24 Hours of Le Mans version or the JGTC version of the Denso Supra. Now. If this this looks vaguely familiar to you, if you're into Japanese race cars, that's because this is the Tamiya kit that they did of the other Supra. Remember, there's the the Castrol sponsored Supra that's been in production that you can order from Hobby Link Japan or anywhere because it's currently in the catalog. And then they made a red and white one that has a different body to it a little bit. Uh, that is what these decals are. Now, these decals do not have all of the red printed in them because that was, you know, Tommy's thing. They're trying to make you build a car without two-toning it, basically. Uh, and I have one of the Denso cars, and the decals actually look pretty decent in it, but it's one of those things where it's just sketch enough. And those decals from the 90s are so dubious in the first place that I really, really wanted a set of these decals to be able to you know, in case the worst happened. You know, my thing was, oh, well, it push comes to shove. Uh, I can always two-tone the paint anyway and not use the colored red parts of the decals because they kind of look like they've been scuffed up a little bit from being in plastic for, uh, what, 20 years now? But uh, the other issue is there's a lot of white printing on those decals for basically all the wording that goes, you know, into, if I can get this to focus and not be so shiny, all of the, you know, all of this printing on the red is all in white lettering. So, uh, I got a minor get into that yellow stage. They're not really yellow, but I'm afraid if you put them on red, it would be, you know, like, Ugh. so anyway, these are brand new fresh reprints. Uh, Chunko just ran these off, uh, last month. That may be a lie. I, most of these kits I bought in December between the time where I left my last job and was in my mind promised another one, but that never came through. But I, you know, from the end, basically from around Christmas time, I haven't bought anything new except this set of decals because it was a whole $13 to replace the decals in a kit. And like I said, it's a fresh, 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 brand new reprint, so I don't have to worry about these decals for a while. So, huzzah. The one interesting thing that just came on the, uh, on the, to the site this morning is that Shunko is going to be reprinting another set of decals they've done in the past that hasn't been available for a while for an old Tamiya kit, and that is the Team Phoenix uh, Opal Calibra DTM decals. That's the kit that's yellow. It has white and yellow uh, livery to it. Uh, again, there's another 1990s kit from Tamiya that has sketch decals that do a lot of yellow. Uh, mine in particular look awful. I bought the kit really, really cheap because the decals are bad. And so I just, I had the kit and I really haven't really done a whole heck of a lot with it, even, like, I just sort of looked at it, went, yep, those decals were sketch, all the parts are there, cool, and I stuck it on the shelf, and now they're going to be uh, either, I don't know if it's going to be this month or the beginning of next month, I guess it's actually the beginning of March, they're going to be reprinting those decals, which, again, uh, you know, huzzah and halloo, that'll be uh, another set of decals for another uh, old Tamiya kit that uh, I'm thrilled to have them reprint, because... I needed a set, and I couldn't find any. If they could just do a set of decals for the uh, D2-sponsored uh, AMG uh, C-Class DTM for the 1990s, I would do a happy dance in the middle of the street, because really, that would be the last set of decals I need in terms of, like, reprinted, reprint decals, because, I mean, these are obviously 
you know, they're, they're, this is the Tommy decal sheet, uh, minus the red parts, although they've added the 24 hours of Le Mans stuff because that was not in the actual kit. But, you know, physically speaking, this is just a reprint of the Tommy decals. And the, oh, and the Team Phoenix ones for the Calibra are, are actually really are a reprint of the Tommy decals minus the really big panels of yellow. Uh, I would be, you know, I, I, I need, this is how I said, it's a reprint of a reprint. I need a reprint of the reprint of one more, one more set of DTM decals and then I'll be, you know, good to go as far as that goes. So now, let's spin the camera around and take a look at the uh, model kits. Go. All right. So uh, now we're back here. You see our. Uh, Honda S800 is up on wheels and tires back here for anybody who's been you know watching the updates of how that builds uh, We're not gonna do a video on this right away because I have a few more things I want to do before I think it justifies an update But like I said it's uh, it's on it's all on its uh, wheels and we're not tripoding so uh, Huzzah and hello. We I want to talk about how that builds up a little bit the reasons why I'm pointing out that it doesn't tripod but uh Again, update for another day. So this right here is the Modelers, which is what we were just talking about, resin kit. This is the Honda uh, S660 Alpha. This is the modern day uh, version. And there's no actual picture of the kit, the kit on this side of this. The last couple of kits, they've had like a little sticker on the end that shows you what it is, but that doesn't exist on this. This is basically the new Honda S uh, series uh, kit. It is following after the S600. This is the modern day version of it. This is actually going to, going to be a production car if it's not already in production for Japan. We're not going to get it as of yet, but we may at some point in the future. Honda America really wants this uh, to be here. I'm going to show you the resin stuff in a second. I already took the uh, the top off of it so that it can... Uh, I don't have to try to fight with that on camera. But uh, you get uh, a nice big pamphlet style uh, colorized instruction manual, if you want to call it an instruction manual. Uh, this is a little bit nicer than the last couple of them have been. Uh, basically, you have a set of a regular set of decal sheets with a little carbon fiber insert for the door with the door handles built into it, and you've got your gauge clusters, and this part right here makes up your steering wheel, and there are, uh, this set of decals is actually, again, decals, but this is entirely chrome, uh, one of the new things that has really uh, become a, th a, a technology now that you can print chrome chrome rather than, uh, you know, something that is approximately silver. Uh, you have a sheet of, I'm going to pull all this stuff out, so I'm going to show you parts of it here. you got a sheet of uh, cutout uh, acetate windows. Basically, these are the two side windows and the windows for the back uh, rear hatch. There is a uh, pre-cut and pre-shaded windshield and then there's a sheet of photo etch in here and this gives you a parts layout on this side This is basically your instructions on how to build the kit uh, You know glue your pedal assembly in here's your interior built up uh, They're cutting a lot of it off here because this is part of the chassis plate as well How to do your steering wheel how to do your decals for the door how to decorate your uh, dashboard your dashboard does attach to the bottom of the uh, body as opposed to like a, on the this part of the interior uh, the chassis on these is very simplified, as we've shown you on the last couple of them. Really, the only pieces to this chassis uh, are the little exhaust pipe, and then there are wheel adapters that uh, you use to attach the wheels to the bl chassis block itself, and then there are screws and metal axles. And then it gives you sort of a painting guide for the car itself. Basically, this is more of a decal placement guide than anything, but it gives you an idea what the car looks like all built up and tells you, you know, how to insert these back pieces of glass and, and your your... Uh, how to paint the tail lights and things like that. And then up here, which is slightly off camera, so I'll bend this down a little bit, it gives you the uh, color co the color chart, which is not going to go in focus, but whatever. You get the general idea. It tells you the colors that the S660 comes in along with their paint code. So if you want to get the paint mixed, uh, you could. So there's that. Uh, this little plastic baggie has your wheels and your screws in it. Uh, this plastic bag has your pre-cut windshield, as well as that little sheet of acetate with sort of pre-cut but not cut out uh, pieces of plastic. Because if you're not going to put the hard top on here, you don't really need the side pieces. So I can understand why they didn't make those sort of pre-cut and ready to go. This is your uh, basic decal sheet, which is, I realize is upside down. Uh, again, a little carbon fiber insert for the door panels and your dashboard gauges. Pretty good registration on these. These decals have been improving uh, each set. 
This is your chrome set of decals, which these are the basically the chrome pieces for the wheels. I don't know, it might be easier to paint those on with a Molotov than use these decals, uh, depending on how you feel about either painting uh, with Molotov or using decals. And it's got your scripts for your Honda logos, for your dashboard and your, uh, your steering wheel and the body and everything else. So, and the wheels faces, those little, these little itty bitty four Honda logos there for the wheel faces. That's cool. And then there's also floating around in here a little uh, sort of pre-cut sheet of mylar for the uh, rear view mirror and the side view mirrors. Those I really would just molotol and be done with it rather than screw around with actual sticker stickers. And then uh, here is your photo etch set for this kit, which has basically some vents and your uh, brake faces and a few things down here. You've got some color pieces for like your third brake light and things like that. So it's a, a little sheet, but still... Uh, uh, you know, covers a little bit, makes just that little bit to uh, keep it from being too toy-like, in my opinion. And then, uh, let me fish the resin back off the floor here. Then we have our, our resin set, which they, once again, have done in this very neat uh, vacuum pack, uh, if you will. Um, let me see here. Your your tires are, again, your, your typical modeler's fare, where you are getting uh, a, just a hard resin uh, tire that is, bl is black resin. These are not flexible at all. Your wheel face, or your wheel faces, basically, are these here. They have uh, a decent detail to them, maybe. I don't think there's anything else that's let's focus on except my wedding ring, I guess, but you get the idea. Maybe. For some reason, that's... <laughs> for some reason, doing that is making the light all wonky, too. That's fantastic. But anyway, you got four of those, obviously. Uh, you got your... Your resin seats, which are kind of nice because they're one piece, so you don't have to worry about sanding that seam on the back. Uh, you know, they're basically designed to fit one way into your floor bucket, so there is a positive uh, uh, mounting point. And you've got your door panels, your wipers, uh, some uh, poly caps, which are kind of interesting. I don't think uh, other kits recently have had poly caps. These are your uh, rather clunky but still functional wheel backs that attach the wheel to the uh, to the chassis. Basically, here's this is uh, a brake face, which is great to have that photo etch piece because that kind of looks like crud otherwise. Uh, pedal set, your steering wheel. Uh, this is your uh, center console for the uh, interior. So at least that's a separate piece in this kit. Uh, your steer, your uh, dashboard is uh, a pretty good looking piece got some good engraving on there it's not their their stuff has been improving consistently uh every single thing they release now there is the uh you know the, the normal normalness uh, i would say of this being a modeler's kit where this is your interior bucket it's just cast into a slab that also has the chassis engraving on the bottom of it this is some pretty nice engraving here you got a lot of uh you know wiring showing for the uh, uh you know the, the front end here which is your your brake lines and things like that uh you know it's, it's shallow but it is what it is screw holes obviously for the screws um you know i, I what can you say it's it, it, it's it suffices for what it's for basically um let me see if i can find it here without knocking everything on the ground so this basically ends up being your uh exhaust pipe right there just sort of glues onto the very end there and gives you an exhaust pipe out the back. So, it's, I mean, again, it's, is it fantastic? No. Is it sufficient? Yep, sure is. Um, let me see. Let's fit a few things for you here. So here's your, again, your centerpiece. Here's your center console. So we'll take a look at this. And that fit could be yeah, a little bit better up here in the front, but you probably won't see that because that's end up being where your dashboard is. As far as the rest of it goes, it's fairly seamless. A little, little, uh, little seam work there, and that'll look like it's integrated. As far as I'm concerned, it's, uh, you know, you have a, a gap there. <laughs> if I, if I can get it to focus on that instead of the, all the model kits in the background, yes, maybe. <laughs> I love how this this light is not bright enough for anything until you do this, where this resin is, cream is really picking every piece of my LED light up. But, yeah, I mean, it, it shows you there's, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a tiny seam there, but not much. It's, it fits, basically, is the gist of, of what we're going after. Let's take one of these seats and see how well it, uh, and it snapped right in. 
So that's that's a pretty positive mounting. I mean, it's not even if I wiggle it, it's it's wiggly, but just because it's not glued in there. So there you go on that. Uh, let's see, your chassis to to uh, interior fit is pretty much standard fare for one of these. Uh, this is definitely a curbside shelf model. In terms, you know, a little wig little wiggly here and there, but once you screw the screws in, it'll center everything up. Obviously, and tighten that up for you. Uh, here's your body, which much like every modeler's kit, the chassis way, is a big block of resin that you could kill somebody with. Uh, you know, from the inside here, it's very, very thick, uh, chunky resin. But on the outside, the part you're actually going to see, very well detailed. Uh, I think the panel lines on this are are good enough, as it were. Maybe maybe rescribe them a little bit, but they're very definitely not weak. Definitely, this is a you know pressure pot. Uh, resin casting, it's not, you know, a, 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 a slop cast by any stretch of the imagination. It's, it's being clunky and chunky. It's not flexible at all. And you know, you have a, you know, a good, good fit to it. Let me pull out one of these wheel backs so you sort of get the general gist of how these things fit in here. Much of this is supposed to be a front or a back, but, you know, there's how that'll end up being. It's, it's, again, attaches the wheel to the body. <laughs> not not much else going on there. One of the th things I like to do with, with these, you know, with a resin kit is, well, how well does the, do things fit that you have to attach to the body? So here's the optional hard top. Not part of the, not part of the, uh, the build necessarily. You don't have to put it on. A lot of people probably won't, but you have these little engraved dashes up here uh, that I think are probably supposed to be representing the, uh, and they are, the, uh, the sun visor pieces on the bottom side. So at least that engraving is there so you can paint them and not have them just look stupid. And then your uh, hard top or your optional target top, I guess, fits on there. And, uh, you know, it, it, once you get it adjusted for space, it fits on there pretty well. Uh, there's a, a little bit of a gap maybe on the back end here, but uh, I don't think a little, a little sanding there will, will take care of that as far as the way it sits. But otherwise it fits in there just fine. And then the other piece that is separate on the body will be the front grill uh, piece, which goes in this blank space right here. So, whoops, let's throw it on the, let's throw it on the floor, and and that ends up fitting in there pretty well as well, pretty nice as well, all told. It's a little, I guess it's a little gappy to side to side, but I think if you, uh, you know, make sure you center it in there before you glue it, it'll end up being okay because. You know, your, your headlights are going to wrap around this piece and, and, and cover that little gap. That's why there is a gap there, by the way. It's, you know, the headlights are going to fit. And otherwise, I think, you know, it's obviously a separate piece on the real car. And it's not exactly, you know, 100% flush on the real car if you look at it. So I think it's a pretty good representation of it. And overall, I think this is a pretty decent kit. Or pretty decent resin conversion. You've got your uh, wraparound glass piece here. Clear resin glass piece for the, uh, for the, uh, tail light here which eh, might be upside down I don't think it is though oops is it upside down no oh, it was right side up so this is gonna take a little bit of a little bit of beating to get into place I don't think this is exactly it needs to be shaved a little bit it's a little bit too big for the gap as far as I'm concerned uh, but I mean it's the right shape Overall, it just needs to have a little bit of the top trimmed off, and that's you know what you're gonna get when you get shaped pieces of uh, clear resin or acetate like that. So, not for the beginner, but overall, it's definitely a lot better than uh, a lot of resin that you'll see out there, and uh, definitely is a continued improvement in terms of what the uh, modelers have been offering in their kits. Their their stuff to, is it has been getting better and better each release, and when it comes right down to it, I don't think you can really ask for a whole heck of a lot more, you know, when you're buying, especially when you're buying unsight unseen resin, is to just last thing be better than, the, you know, the next thing be better than the, the last thing you sold, man. And they are doing that. So There is that. Now we go into regular just model kit releases. So, first up we have a reissue of the uh, Aoshima Toyota Mark II GX81 chassis, 1988 series. This is a rebox, basically, of the... Uh, of several of their Mark II kits you see here on the end here. You get three in one. You can build it as a Mark II Grande G, a Mark II GT Twin Turbo, and a Mark 
to Grande Twin Cam 24. So it includes the parts to build either a 1G JZE or a, or a 1G GZE or a 1G GTE uh, engine. There, so there's enough parts. In, it's an engine insert, by the way, guys. It's not a whole engine. It's not like the engine in the uh, Fujimi High Mecha series. But it is, you know, the top half of the engine, what you'd see of it. So you have option here to build, I said, several styles, decals to do everything in here. There's no real new parts in here. Every single one of the cars, uh, options you have, you're going to get stuck with these factory stock wheels. There are no optional wheels in this kit and one set of tires. Uh, but, you know, other than that, it's uh, a nice kit to have back. Uh, just because, well, a couple of these kits, a couple of the three-in-ones you haven't been able to find for a real long time. I think the last time this kit was reissued, it came out as the Grande Twin Cam. And even that's been a little while since it's come out, so uh, a good a good overall uh, repackaging from Aoshima in terms of what you can do with it. And then we have the uh, most recent reissue of the new Suzuki Jimny tooling. This is the 1987 uh, JA71JCU. Uh, so this is the little turbo version of the of the kit basically not a whole heck of a lot is new about this you know this is Hasegawa's reissuing of new tool policy where they uh tool it in a way that they can get the most bang out of their buck uh you get a new front bumper a new grill area which of course has means new window glass there uh and of course you get these incredibly spiffy 1980s uh decals which i think you know sell the package as far as i'm concerned I picked up a couple of classic rally cars that Hasago had reissued. Um, these are not new by any stretch of the imagination. They've been around for quite a while. I'm not trying to think when these were first done. Uh, this most recent repackaging was done in 2015, but these were just re 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 re, re reissued back in December, uh, and they are the uh, Safari winning uh, Fairlady 240Z so for the 1971 rally uh, Safari rally. Basically, these have cartograph decals on the reprints, so if you're going to find one of these, try to get the newer ones. They're otherwise, you know, completely and totally identical as far as the overall contents, but the new ones have better decals. Uh, you know, Hasegawa tends to print their own decals locally in Japan, but these ones have had uh, cartograph reprints. Uh, so there's that, and then I also got the, sort of, if you want to call it that, a companion kit to it, and that is the uh, reprint, re recent re re reissue of the uh, Safari Rally winning 1970 Bluebird 1600 SSS. Again, this says the new ones have cartograph uh, decal inserts. And, uh, you know, that's basically the whole sh uh, shtick behind these. I think this, again, is a 2015 or 2008 uh, is when they most recently reissued this with the, with the new boxing format. So uh, this, again, was just, just re reissued here in December. So if you've been looking for these, they're back in stock. And then last but not least is another Hasegawa kit that just got re-reissued. I'm trying to think one. What are they saying here? 2018. So this is the last time they reissued this. It doesn't have anything. It has nothing to do with this box art. And that is the Lancia Delta HF Integral 16 valve. Uh, this is the slightly down trim, couple of years uh, earlier version of the uh, Integral Evolution that came out uh, midway through last year. So that is... Uh, the end of that. So anyway, guys, like I said, just a little box, just cleaning things out, and uh, people over at HLJ are probably wondering if I'm still alive or not, since everything's been, <laughs> pre-orders have been canceled, new pre-orders have not been coming in, and I shipped everything out. <laughs> oh no, there's something wrong with our best customer on the East Coast. No, I'm here, and we'll get back to it, but in the meantime, we're going to, you know, work on actually building things rather than just uh, hoarding them. I almost felt dirty saying that. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the other side.